Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to be comparing Quick Surface Lite to Fusion, specifically on creating a freeform model on top of a scanned mesh. Now, first, I want to thank Christo for allowing me to use this M3 bumper scan that he sent. Uh, we're not going to be supplying the scan, but hopefully, if you are considering Quick Surface Lite, this will help you better understand the tools and whether or not it's going to be a benefit to you. So, first things first. Freeform modeling inside of Quick Surface Lite. There are some pros here, and there are a few differences in workflow that I do want to point out to make sure that we're comfortable with how it works. And later in the video, I am going to talk a bit about fit surfaces, as that's a really handy tool, and I'm going to show you how it works. Uh, some of the emails that I've helped people with on different elements of using like a scanned bumper, I think that some of you would really benefit from this tool, so I'm going to kind of highlight that at the end of the video. So first things first, when we're inside of creating a freeform surface, we have creation tools, so adding faces. We've got modification tools, like using a brush that's going to help us smooth it out. And then we've also got tools for things like taking a look at the analysis, how close we are to the underlying mesh. We can turn on symmetry so we can mirror our mesh from one side to the other. And we can also toggle on and off snap mode. So these are all important, and while it seems like there's a limited subset of tools here, there is actually a freeform section. So if we close this out and we go to freeform, you can see that we've got freeform tools here, auto freeform, which in a bumper like this, you don't want to use it. Uh, but then we also have other tools, some that are available in only the professional version, and some that we can still do here, quad. So we can uh, try to create a quad freeform model from an OBJ. So this is pretty handy, but for us, we're gonna be doing new freeform. The first thing that I would suggest if you're considering using this is to start with the manual creation of add face. So what I'm gonna do is just start to draw a face and place it here. Now, once we have the face, it's gonna go back to our manipulate tool. Now we can continue to add faces if we want. We can use rectangular faces or you can use the add face command. But once you have a single face, it's actually pretty easy for us to just start to drag these around. So if we double click an edge, it'll grab the entire chain. We can use the small D icon here to add a new face. We can also manually manipulate these again if they happen to, to jump to a location that you weren't expecting based on your viewpoint. And we can go ahead and move those around. Uh, we can also hold down the Alt key and the Alt key will let us drag out a new face as well. So this is a quick way for us to build out a freeform shape on top of our scan. Now, one of the big benefits here, because we can do this in Fusion, but one of the big benefits that we have here is the ability to know how close we are to the underlying mesh. So if we turn on our analysis, we can see we've got a couple of areas that are showing up green and blue, but in reality, this is pretty far away. Now, that's okay because we're not quite there yet where we're concerned about that, but turning that analysis tool on and off is extremely helpful. I'm going to grab this bottom edge here and I'm going to go ahead and just pull that down a little bit closer. But what I want to do is extrude or add a face there from the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing. And then I want to start to pull some of these edges inward. So we can also hold down Control and Alt. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to add an edge. But what the edge is doing is it's going in the direction of the UV lines. It's not just coming out along X, Y, or Z. So this is something that Fusion can't do, uh, or at least it, it can't do very easy. We, oftentimes we reposition a pivot point in order to get something like that. Uh, so at this point, we're pretty close to the shape we need. Let's say that we're just trying to create this section because maybe we want to add a new uh, inlet, an air duct for an intake or something like that. So we want to get a good representation so we can design a new duct that fits. So when we cut the bumper, we don't have any problems. I'm going to go ahead and pull some of these points over. Let's go ahead and zoom in, pull that one over, and then this one over here as well. And once we're at this stage, I'm going to turn the analysis back on and see, again, we're really not that close. What we can do is we can use a couple of tools. We can start with increasing the, revolu the resolution, which is subdividing, and we can see that we're, we're getting a bit closer. We can manually select an edge and we can split it or use the S key. So what this allows us to do is essentially insert edges where we need more curvature. Uh, and then we also have some tools like a smoothing brush. 
And this is going to allow us to make some gradual changes to the sub D underneath. And then it's going to allow us to get closer, assuming we've got the resolution, to the underlying shape. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it there and maybe split it here and split it on this side again and maybe split it there and there. Uh, so once again, go back to the smoothing brush, kind of move it around and see if we can get it to be as close as possible. You can see that it's getting a little far away here, which is telling me that I need to maybe manually manipulate these edges to get them closer. Maybe pull that one down. And again, I've got direct feedback. I can split this one, add an edge there, go back to my smoothing brush, and again, go back until I'm happy and everything is green. Or manually move these edges around where I need to get a bit closer to the curvature. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And if I hide the mesh, now I've got a really nice representation of that surface. And again, we've got our analysis tools so we can turn on uh, zebra stripes and make sure that we don't have any spots on here. Let's go ahead and make this horizontal. Make sure that we don't have any spots that are going to cause any problems. The flow of all the edges looks pretty good. And then we could export this and move on to doing some CAD work. Now, if you do have the pro version of Quick Surface, there are a lot more CAD tools available to you. But if you happen to be working in light, then generally what you're going to be doing is creating a surface like this and exporting it to another CAD program like Fusion. So now that we've seen that, let's hop into Fusion and let's talk about how we can get that same shape here. So the process is very similar. Uh, we need to create a sub D shape that's snapped to the mesh. The way that we generally do this is with the face tool and we enable object snapping. Now, oftentimes with this, it's easy if we change the opacity of our mesh because it can be hard to see through it. For this example, I'm just going to go ahead and work from left to right. And what I'm trying to do is follow the shape of the bumper itself. So you can see it's bulging out here. I'm going to go ahead and just work my way around, allowing it to snap to the, the mesh. I'm going to add maybe a couple more faces over here. And let's just do one more over here. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Now, if we want to add more underneath, we could do that by, again, coming down to areas where we've got a change in curvature. I'm going to work my way to the, to the right, down to here. And then you want to pay close attention to where the blue dot is because as we get close, it'll snap. And it looks pretty good. I'm going to go from here to the next one down, try to follow that edge. And then we got two more. The last thing that we also want to talk about here is the ability to extrude those edges like we did in quick surface. So real quick, I'm going to change the opacity of the bumper. That way we can see into it a little bit better. And basically if we take this bottom edge and go to modify, edit form, turn on object snap, I can hold down alt to begin extruding an edge. And that edge is going to stay snapped to the mesh. Now, this is where things get a little weird. This doesn't necessarily mean that we're getting a good result. So I'm going to do Control Z. I'm going to turn off object snap. And then I'm going to manually extrude this down, again, holding Alt. Because I actually want it to be a bit further away from the mesh. This is an area where Quick Surface really is a big, uh, a big bonus. Because Quick Surface does a much better job of staying with that mesh. I'm going to reset my pivot point and put it somewhere down here. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and scale inward. So while this isn't going the direction of the UV lines, it's going toward this point. So this does give us some way that we can make a very similar modification. Then I have to rotate this around and maybe pull it down a little bit. All right, so once we're done there, the next thing that we would do is go to Modify, Pull and pull those out to our mesh. At this stage, it doesn't look great. You can see there's a bunch of wobbles, there's a bunch of bumps, and we would really have to go in and add more edges where we need them. We can kick the resolution up independently on each direction, bring our bumper back, and again, go back to pull. Now, with this process, we would need to continually keep adding more faces or more divisions, 
And we would need to manually play around with the flow of edges because in Fusion, we would want these, the flow of the edges to go with the change in curvature of the bumper. Now, this isn't a bad result. And if you only needed to mount something right here, it's actually gonna be pretty close. But as soon as we start changing directions or have to follow, you know, for example, follow the curvature of this edge, this is where we start to get into trouble with Fusion. Now we can, again, use edit form. We can turn on object snap. And for example, we could bring this edge up and we could take the next one and bring it up and it would stay snapped to our mesh. And then we could go back and we could rerun the pull command as well. But keep in mind that pull is not going to be like a fix all solution. It's gonna depend on the quality of your scan, the resolution of that scan itself, and the number of faces and divisions you have. Now for edges like this, having that smoothing brush that we have in quick surface, that is a, again, another big benefit, allows us to quickly and easily move those around. We do have a smooth option, but with the smoothing option, this is essentially going to be an average of selected faces, and it's not going to take into account snapping to the underlying mesh. So every time we make a change like this, that means going back to pull and snapping those selected vertices uh, back, to the sh back to the mesh, back to the shape. At the end of the day, we can get a surface. We can do it. It's just going to require us to do a lot more manual work. And we're not going to have that direct feedback that we have in quick surface that lets us know exactly how close we are to that mesh. Uh, so those are some of those benefits that are important to think about. What we're going to do now is talk a little bit about fit surface and some of the surface tools that you get in quick surface light. Not all of these will be available. You'll notice that some of them are grayed out, things like flatten or extend surface, but we do have some surface tools available to us. The main one that I want to highlight in this video is going to be fit surface. And the main reason for this is uh, I have had several comments and people that I've helped recently that are trying to recreate portions of a scan so that they can mount equipment to it. Uh, you know, so in this case, let's say that we wanted to mount something to the inside of this bumper. What we could do is, uh, I'm actually gonna turn on this freehand one. I'm just gonna paint the area that I'm interested in. Let's say, um, you wanna be careful not to go over these edges. If you do, then it's gonna start to get a, become a really complex surface, but let's go ahead and just paint an area here and then create a fit surface. And basically what this is doing is it's trying to create a surface that fits all of our selections. And let's go ahead and let's clear this and clear the selection and let's do it over here as well. So let's say that I had to fit something right here on the side of this bumper. I could generate a fit surface we could turn on analysis to see how close we are to the mesh, and then we could create that surface. So if you are trying to design, let's say a little arrow piece or add a, a new piece of equipment to a bumper, or if you needed to maybe cut a vent and you wanted a good representation of that shape so that you could create your new model, this is a great way to do it. Uh, you could work this way and recreate an entire bumper or entire complex shape, but it would require you to have the pro license so that you can trim the surfaces or again, export all these into another CAD program like Fusion. Now, once again, there are a lot of different tools here. We just kind of scratched the surface, but if you are considering doing freeform modeling on top of a scanned mesh and you're struggling with Fusion or you're hitting some walls or some limitations, or maybe just don't have all the tools available to you like the comparison, then I think Quick Surface Lite definitely levels that functionality up. Now, I know that you're looking at spending a couple hundred dollars, four to five hundred dollars for Quick Surface Lite. We are an affiliate channel, so make sure that you use our code LEAD10 if you're trying to purchase Quick Surface Lite or Pro or Quick Surface for SolidWorks. That will help out the channel and also get you a discount. I'll put all that information in the description of this video. But if you have any questions on this, the freeform modeling or fit surface modeling that we showed in this video, or any other questions on how they compare Fusion and Quick Surface Lite, please leave a comment and let me know. We will be doing more content with Quick Surface Lite, and we will be covering both Pro and Quick Surface for SolidWorks on our website, learneverythingaboutdesign.com. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.